Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> we may never know how far-reaching something we may think, say, or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. Thank you. We'll call the first regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clyunas? Here. Manny? Excuse? Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. <clears throat> Next, we will have the presentation of the national colors by the Sheboygan Police Department's Honor Guard. Please rise. shoulder, arms. Ready? Cut. And arms. Um. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shoulder. Arms. Order. Arms. Ready? Cut. Forward. Arms. Ready? Two. we have the invocation by Pastor Rob Sizemore of Calvin Christian Reformed Church. Please remain standing. You get to see the fire department and how it works together. You get to see how ambulances work together. You get to see how teachers and social workers and religious leaders all work together to care for the city. And, and not only do you get to see them, but you get to oversee them. And for that reason, many of us envy you. Um, but few of us would want your jobs because we know that with all that view comes great responsibility. And so what we want to do tonight is to pray to the one who makes burdens light that he will give you success and all of the people of this great city as he cares for us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the way that you gather people together into community, and this is a great example of what you do. And as we get started in another year of serving you, I thank you for the elected leaders that, is, that assemble in this room. I ask that you give them a very, very clear view of your passion for this place. You have greater ambitions for it than we could ever imagine. You have greater love for it than we could ever feel. And I thank you that you have put people as these in charge of us so that we can work together. I ask that you make their burden light, that you give them clear wisdom, that you allow them in their own lives to balance their passion with discernment, and that in all of their decision making, they use great wisdom and great insight and great encouragement. Father, tonight we want to serve you. We thank you for all you've done for us, and especially tonight we just remember that you've given us an incredible place to live. Thank you for being so good to us. Amen. 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 Be seated. Thank you, Pastor Sizemore. <clears throat> Next, we have the swearing in of the alderman elect, the aldermen that are returning, and the aldermen that are starting new that will help lead this community, our beautiful city of Sheboygan, to prosperity. I'd ask that the eight aldermen elect please step forward. We will, Madam City Clerk, we'll swear you in. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like you to all raise your right hands and repeat after me. I, please Hi. say your name. James Horn. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. 
and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. In the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of alder person. Of the office of alder person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Members of the Common Council, citizens of Sheboygan, your new alderman who will lead us to prosperity in the future. Thank you very much. item on the agenda will be the adopting of the rules of the Common Council. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your, um, Your Honor. Uh, I would move that we adopt the rules that govern the previous Common Council and use those same rules to govern this Common Council. Second. There's a motion and a second. <coughs> Is there any discussion on the adoption of those rules? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The rules of the Common Council stand adopted. The next item on the election is the, is the elect on the, on the agenda is the election of the president and the vice president of the Common Council. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that nominations for the election of president of the Common Council be received from the floor. That voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives the majority. There's a second to that motion? Second. Second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Floor is open for nominations. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I nominate Alderperson Renee Shusha for president. There's a nomination from the floor for Alderman Susha. Other nominations? Alderman Serta. Thank you. I move to nominate Alderman Berg for president. Alderman Berg for president. Is there a second to that? Second. There's a second. Two nominations from the floor. Other nominations? Alderman? No. Okay. I'm sorry, Alderman Kilsa. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff. Can I move that nomination to be closed? Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will conduct the election at this time.
Excuse us, we're struggling to read some of your signatures. <laughs> Please print next time. <laughs> it's a signature. <laughs> Could be yours. <laughs> Alderman, you have elected Alderman Berg as your new president. Congratulations, Alderman Berg. Next, we have the election for vice president in Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. For the election of vice president, I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will conduct, we will uh, take nominations from the floor at this time. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move to nominate Alderman Bonnie Serta. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion to second to nominate Alderman Serta. Alderman Hanna. I move to nominate Marilyn Montemuno. Is there a second? Second. Not two nominations from the floor. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? <coughs> Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be closed. Second. Second. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We will conduct the election for vice president.
it's as technical as voting at the elections. <laughs> We know you're going to be a hard-working oh, council because wow. it's taken a long time to count your votes. This one? Yes. Alderman, you have elected your new vice president, Alderman Serta. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have the election of, rep of a representative on the City Planning Commission, a representative to the Board of Contractors, Examiners, and two representatives to the Capital Improvements Commission. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that um, nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and the balloting to continue in one, until one candidate receives a majority. This is for um, election of representative on the City Plan Commission. Is there a second? Sure. Second. All those, in, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Nominations from the floor. Alderman Davis. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. I'd like to nominate uh, Alderman Marilyn Montemayor. To the plan, City Plan Commission first. Yes. We'll take that one first. There's a second. Other nominations? Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to nominate uh, all the person Renee Susha to the Capital Improvements uh, oh, we're not, Commission. No, we're, not that we're, far. we're just doing city planning for now. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Are there any other nominations for the City Plan Commission? Mm -hmm. Are there any other nominations for the City, city Plan Commission? Paul McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations, nominations be closed and we cast a unanimous ballot for Alderman Marilyn Montemara for City Plan Commission. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Montemayor, you are the new City Plan Commission member. <laughs> the next is a position. Well, we've, we've got two different, we've got different order here. We will take, as you read it, the position for the Board of Contractors Examiners. Alderman, Alderman move then that um, nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. This is for one position on the Board of Contractors Examiner. Second. Thank you, Alderman Groff. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Accept the nominations from the floor. Alderman Bauman. I thank you, Your Honor. I would move that uh, Jeff Radke be nominated for the position of the Board of Contractors Examiners. Second. There's a motion to second to nominate Alderman Radke. All those in favor state aye. 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 Oh, wait a minute. We don't take that. <laughs> <laughs> who, who switched glasses on me? <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be closed and we cast a unanimous ballot for Alderman Jeff Radke for the position of Board of Contractors Examiners. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Radke, you're the new uh, member to the Board of Contractors Examiners. Congratulations. Next, we will do two positions for the Capital Improvements Commission. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that nominations be received from the floor. Voting to be done by open ballot. And if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list. And well, in this case, if more than three candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list. And balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority, or until two candidates receive um, a majority of votes. Um, for two positions open on the Capital Improvements Commission. Is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Accept the nominations from the floor. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to nominate Alderperson Vanderwille to this position. Second. There's a motion to second to nominate Alderman Vanderwille. Open to more nominations. Alderman Ratke. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Now I'd like to nominate all the person Renee Susha to the Capital Improvements Commission. Is there a second to that? Second. second. Other nominations? Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to nominate 
older person Hannah to the commission. <laughs> Is there a second to that nomination? Second. There's a second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be closed. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will conduct the election. Attorney McLean. In print.
Hullerman, you have selected one, and we will have a runoff for the other position. The first position that you have elected to serve on the Capital Improvements Commission is Alderman Vanderweel. Congratulations, Alderman Vanderweel. <laughs> we will now conduct the election for the runoff, and it'll be uh, between Alderman Hanna and Alderman Susha. Alderman, you have elected as your as your alderman, alderman, alderman representative to the Capital Improvements Commission, Alderman Susha. Congratulations, Alderman Susha. Vote the order. Alderman Grau. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the council recess in order to elect the chairperson of the committee of the whole. Second. There's a motion and a second to recess. Before I take the vote, for the benefit of the public that's here tonight and the benefit of the public that's watching, this is a time when the, the common council or the council gets together and elects the uh, committee of the whole chair and the mayor is asked to leave and so is the city clerk. So we will not be present. At the time when you reconvene, we'll come back to the, uh, to the, to the meeting, to the council chamber. Thank you very much. Favorite of
recess, uh, to recess. State aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We stand recess. Would Vice President Suda please join me uh, so we can uh, process the uh, election for the Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. <coughs> I'd like to call to order the first meeting of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, Alderman Suda, would you please call the roll? <coughs> Ballman. Here. Boren. Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Present. Davis? Here. Groff? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Excused. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? Here. All 14 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Groff? Thank you, Your Honor. But Shouldn't there be 15, 15. present? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. President, I would move that nominations be received from the floor for the uh, position of chairperson of the Committee of the Whole, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. We have a second. Second. We have a second. We will now open the floor for nominations. Order person Meyer. Thank you, Mr. President. I nominate Jim Groff for Committee of the Whole. We have a motion and second to nominate Alder Person Groff. Do we have any more nominations? Alder Person Bauman. Thank you, Mr. President. I do have a short nomination speech, if I can make it, please. Certainly. Proceed. Thank you. It is my distinct honor to nominate Silas Vanderwilly, Alderman Vanderwilly, as the Committee of the Whole Chairperson. Silas is beginning his third term in office as Alderperson. His experience since 2002 has been unsurpassed in quality. He makes his decisions based on what his constituency wants, even though his own feelings sometimes do not follow suit. He listens to the people. <coughs> Although Silas may not have the time under his belt, as a few of us do on this council, he has a new approach as one of the newer leaders among us. What would some of Silas' goals be when we elect him committee of the whole chairperson? From his own words, I wish to repeat as follows. My goal is to have meetings that will give the council the information that they need to make an educated decision, to communicate with the citizens by giving them the information they need to understand their local government. In the past, when Silas had voted, it was always on issues he did not take sides and does not consider personalities. Given what I have just said, I would ask that you as a council member vote Silas Vanderwilly as committee of the whole chairperson. Do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Motion and second uh, for Alder Person Vanderwilly. Do we have any more nominations? Do we have any more nominations? <coughs> Do we have any more nominations? Alder Person Groff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President. Um, I would move that um, nominations be closed. Second? second. We have motion and second. Ayes in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh,
I'm pleased to introduce the new Chairman of the Committee of the Whole, Alderperson Vanderweel. Alderperson Groff. President, I move that we reconvene as a common council. Do we have a second? Uh, motion to second. Discussion? Ayes in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Please call the mayor and city clerk uh, to the chambers. We stand adjourned. Leave it up to them. President Berg. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Uh, the council has selected Alderperson Silas Vanderweel as the chairperson of the Committee of the Whole for this legislative year. Congratulations, Alderman Vanderweel. I was going to clap again, but I heard it pretty <laughs> yeah, loud. It'll just be us, too. <laughs> <laughs> is that okay? All right, good. Thank you. The uh, Next item on the agenda is a, the President of the Council message. And I'd ask President Berg, please step up. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you and welcome to all. And a special thanks to older person Renee Susha. Life is always much more interesting uh, uh, when we have competition for offices. And uh, I think the council should also thank older person Susha because this was a contested office. I didn't spend all that much time writing the speech. So hopefully it will be short. Uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, this is always a special time, the beginning of a legislative year. We come together as new colleagues, old colleagues. We have new committee assignments, old and new challenges. However, as we look to the future, we need to be mindful of our 153 years of past. And I thank uh, former older person Bill Wangerman, uh, who is a city historian, for providing me with some what I find interesting information about our past and our history of governance. On Fe February 9th, 1846, the village of Sheboygan was incorporated. Surprisingly, one of the first acts of that village board was to appropriate dollars for a bridge across the Sheboygan River. Guess where we're going with this one. <laughs> uh, uh, the city was chartered in 1853, and for uh, the job of older person was remarkably different at that time. Uh, one of the responsibilities of older persons were to light and extinguish the gas lamps in their wards. Um, also, we didn't have to worry because at that time I was informed we do have a full-time clock winder. Uh, budgeting was by wards and the aldermen controlled fire funds, street funds, and school funds. It's also interesting to note that councils have not always agreed with their mayor. Uh, in 1910, the mayor called a council meeting and no one showed up because they were feuding. The next night, he again called a council meeting and no one showed up. They were feuding. The night after, he called another, and when no one showed, he issued an order to call to the house. The police went, searched out each older person, detained them, brought them to the council chambers, locked the door, and stood guard out of the door until such time as uh, the meeting was concluded. Now, it's interesting to note that a couple years later, they had plans for a new city hall. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's connected either. Now, it's also interesting to note that council members have not always agreed with each other. Uh, there was a time when the debate became so heated that the council began throwing ashtrays at each other at, and, and at those were the times where ashtrays were on the desk. The next day, the mayor had a buzzer installed uh, to the police station under his desk. And you know, Mayor Perez, I snuck in here and looked and it's still there. So uh, just that's a cautionary word, shall we say. Um, um, I spoke earlier of uh, building City Hall. You know, I don't know if um, 
Uh, these are the original chairs or not, but I think they must have been designed by the taxpayers because the longer you sit in them, the more uncomfortable they become. Uh, please take a little time and try and move your chair around. You'll notice a couple of things. They don't move real quickly or necessarily in the direction you would like to have them go. Need I say more? <coughs> we still face challenges in the days ahead. Writing costs, flat revenues, a new police station, Revisiting the ambulance service delivery and an aging infrastructure will likely provide the content of our legislative agenda. Along with this, we need to look forward to the exciting opportunities of growth, a space museum and a new urbanism with upscale residential development that will soon make our oldest part of the city the newest. It's unlikely we can control the presentation of these issues. However, what we can control is our process and how we resolve these issues. Over 153 years, the contents of our debate <coughs> may change, but the democratic process that defines our decision-making remains. Let us again put principles of sound leadership before personalities and personal agendas. Let's be balanced, fair, and give due consideration to all sides before judging. Let us strive to be representatives and not politicians. And as long as we're talking about history, I'd like to offer I, one thought on what a politician uh, might sound like. Uh, so if I ever sound like this, please remind me. Believe me, if you do, I will also. Uh, this is a quote from the Senate, and it came uh, uh, at a time when they were debating the temperance movement. And uh, this is, I don't know who this is accorded to, but Senri, Senator Henry Blair is the individual who asked the uh, individual what his position was on uh, the temperance movement. It goes as follows. I had not intended to discuss this controversial issue at this particular time. However, I want you to know that I do not shun controversy. On the contrary, I'll take a stand on any issue at any time, regardless of how radical a controversy it may be. You have asked me how I feel about whiskey. Well, here's where I stand on that question. If when you say whiskey, you mean the devil's <coughs> brew, the poison spirit, the bloody monster that defiles innocence, dethrones reasons, destroys the home and creates misery, poverty, yes, literally takes the bread from the mouths of little children. If you mean the evil drink that topples the Christian man, then I am against it uh, with all of my heart. But if when you say whiskey, you mean the oil of conversation, the philosophic wine, the ale consumed when good fellows get together that puts a song in their hearts, laughter on their lips, the warm glow of contentment in their eyes. If you mean Christmas cheer, the stimulating drink that puts spring in an old man's footsteps on a frosty morn. If you mean that drink whose sale puts untold millions of dollars in our treasury, which I use to provide tender care for our little crippled children, our blind, our deaf, our dumb, our pitiful aged and infirm, to build highways, hospitals, and schools, then I am certainly in favor of it. That is my stand, and I will not compromise. <laughs> I would remind you uh, that we are not politicians. We just may happen to play them on television every other Monday night. Uh, on a personal note, however, being an alderman is not about, uh, is not who we are. It is what we do. Yet how we do it, what we do, doing the public's business in the public's view, puts our strengths, our biases, and our frailties on display for all to judge. And even though we are likely to differ, I salute each and every one of you for your willingness to risk who you are for what you believe in. And let us be bound together tonight by those words that we heard recited earlier to faithfully and uh, impartially discharge these duties. Thank you. Thank you, President Berg. Next we have the Committee of the Whole Chairman's Message. Alderman Silas, please, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. 
This will be a lot shorter, rest assured. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for uh, electing me community of the whole chair. And uh, I would like to thank my wife Jody and my son Dylan for being here tonight. And also uh, my daughters Carly and Jaden for watching on TV. Without them, without their patience and support, I wouldn't be here tonight. It's the beginning of a new council year. Starting fresh is a wonderful thing. This year we have many things to accomplish and tough decisions to make. If this council as a whole communicates and trusts each other, we will accomplish positive things for the city. It is important for us to have the information we need to make an educated decision. We also need to communicate with the citizens and give them the information that they need to understand their government. I believe that we can accomplish these things through, through the community of the whole meetings. Above all, we need to remember that after the debates and the differences of opinions are expressed on this council floor, we cannot take anything personal. When we leave, we leave as friends. Thank you. Once again, Alderman Van Will, thank you very much. President Burke, thank you very much for your message. my turn to say a few words. I thank you for that opportunity. Good evening, citizens of this great city of Sheboygan. Alderman, Madam City Clerk, Mr. City Attorney. I address you tonight with utmost respect and sincere humility. I congratulate our new Alderman, Jim Bourne, Jean Clay Junis, Mark Hanna, and Bob Ryan. Welcome to our team. I congratulate our newly re-elected Alderman, Bonnie Serda, Gene Kittleson, Richard Manny, who is not here with us, and Silas Vanderwill. Welcome back to our team. And I'd also congratulate again President Berg. Congratulations, President Berg. Vice President Serda, congratulations. And Committee of the Whole Chair, Mr. Vanderwill, Alderman Vanderwill. The elections are never easy. Keep in mind, though, that, that the one that did not get a position wasn't voted out. You're still an alderman, so you're still in. Usually with elections, you get voted out. And, and that, that, to me, is pleasurable. Before you tonight, you have the appointments that I have made. As you, as you go through the appointments, I ask that you do not take anything personal. I did the best job that I thought I could possibly do, weighing and balancing the skills and the talents and the experience. And one thing that I really looked to was trying to create a sense of new leadership in, in, the, uh, in the committee appointments, to give the aldermen who have not had that opportunity to be leaders an opportunity. You've done that tonight yourselves, amongst yourselves. Tonight is a night of reflection. It is a night to take full measure of our exceptional accomplishments in this first year. It is a night to speak of the future and the difficult challenges we will face together as I continue to, to, to serve you and you continue to support me. It is also a night to sincerely say thank you and ask you for your energy, your goodwill, your courage to work with me in the next years which will be filled with enormous challenges. Before I begin to talk about these enormous challenges, let me share with you some of our remarkable accomplishments in the past year, for we have much to celebrate. Although this is a topic that a lot of people still do not like to hear, I still consider it a victory for the people. Within 21 days of taking office, we saved Sheridan Park. <laughs> Our citizens' voices were clearly and undeniably heard. The council shortly thereafter restored the Board of Parks and Forestry Commission and just recently passed an ordinance which makes it extremely <coughs> difficult for a future council to destroy any of our parks again. <laughs> just as important, the council selected a location for our new police station. I'll tell you one thing. Construction will begin in 2007. During my campaign, I promised you open government 
and I promise you responsive government, and I have kept that promise. The door to my office is open to all. I have answered hundreds of phone calls and literally met with hundreds of people that wanted to share their concerns and ideas with their mayor. This past year, we had the most people in, in recent history wanting to address the Common Council during the public forum. I encourage you to continue to speak to us because we are going to listen to you. This past year, we had the most people consistently attending our Common Council meeting. Generally, 50 to 60 people attended, attended our meetings. Tonight is another good example of that. I encourage you to keep attending the meetings and learn more about how we run your government. This past year, I believe we've had the largest audience ever on TV8. You care about how we conduct ourselves and run your government. You have taken a serious interest in your city government. Thank you for caring. This past year, we set a record and twice handled more than 100 documents in one meeting. You are reaching out to us because you know we are responsive and sensitive to your needs and concerns. Please keep reaching out to us. Our city website has been completely redesigned and now offers comprehensive information and updated information about your city. My newsletter is posted each month on our website. 30 Minutes with Your Mayor airs twice a month on Channel 8. I have conducted listening sessions in every, in every ward in this city, listening to you and your praise and concerns for our beautiful city. I am currently holding listening sessions at Mead Public Library regarding possible needed changes to any outdated and obsolete city ordinances. I have the honor of speaking to our senior citizens at our senior center once a month. I have also spoken to many of you at your service clubs, churches, and schools. The warm reception and encouragement that I receive each time confirms that you care about your city and your government. Our Clean City Initiative has been a tremendous success. We in the city of Sheboygan have always been extremely proud of our homes, our yards, and our neighborhoods. I know I am. So no longer can just a few get away with converting their property into junkyards. And I promise we will continue this initiative. We're also working hard to get our roadways into decent shape through our capital improvement strategic plan. Historic Michigan Avenue has been reconstructed. The reconstruction of 8th Street between Erie Avenue and Michigan Avenue has begun as well. And the reconstruction of Common Street is coming. We are working hard with the with the county and the town of Sheboygan to reconstruct Eisner Avenue. And our comprehensive five-year plan has many other street improvements on schedule. As many of you know, Sheboygan is becoming a destination place to visit. Tourism is ever more important to our city's economy. Our new tourism director is quickly and powerfully moving ahead to promote all that our city has to offer. We continue to work hard to complete the development of the South Pier District. The Blue Harbor Resort majestically stands out against the shoreline, encouraging the completion of the South Pier District. The oversight committee that I have appointed to work with Blue Harbor Resort Management is an important part of a new team in promoting and protecting our interests. We have also appointed a cable fran service franchise committee with citizen members to negotiate an agreement that will meet your needs and address your concerns. We created a citizens committee to negotiate stronger and better TV services because citizens are not happy with the service that they're getting now. We have also begun a new and trusting working relationship with city, with county officials so that real shared services and real shared costs can truly be realized. This year, I will ask the council to involve the leaders of our community and the business leaders to establish a five-year plan for economic expansion and financial stability. <laughs> But as impressive and powerful as these accomplishments have been in the past year, the challenges facing us are greater, much greater. Our financial status in the next three years will be extremely difficult. Flat revenues and ever-increasing costs means that we must be vigilant, creative, and dynamic as we move forward to make city government more efficient and more cost-effective. 48% of our levy and that's the money we spend annually is controlled by the state. 
We have already been told by the state that revenue sharing will not increase this year. You, the citizens of Sheboygan, <coughs> control 41% of the money we spend annually. And you, too, have told us no more. Alderman, the people of Sheboygan who control most of our annual budget, the state and the voters, have made it absolutely clear that there will not be, nor should there be, any more increases in taxes. As I meet with citizens throughout the city, as I met with citizens throughout the city during my budget listening sessions, every single time I spoke with citizens about our budget, the message was, was very clear. No more taxes. Even as I carefully explained that no more taxes meant that there will be a trade-off on employees, which in turn may mean a trade-off in services, the message was still clear. No more taxes. Even as I rephrase that no more taxes means we will have to lay people off because we will not have the money to pay for the automatic annual increases in wages and salaries, steps and longevities, insurance premiums, energy costs, gasoline costs, principal and interest for the new police station and the new fire station. The message again was no more taxes. Citizens of Sheboygan, your message is clear to me. It is time to deliver the goods. Alderman, I will be asking you to pass a budget this year that will not increase property taxes. With your cooperation, I will also conduct educational sessions for the council so that every alderman understands the true impact of a no property tax increase budget decision. Alderman, this next budget is the biggest challenge we face. It is time to rethink how our city does business. It is time for us to do more with less. It is time for the city, department heads, employees, the city council, to do business the way people expect us to do it. In the next few days, I will also be sharing with my department heads and with the council our citizens' information that we have gathered during our citizens' budget listening sessions and surveys. What you have told us about what we do well and what needs improvement will be the framework for our strategic plan to improve our services. To improve our services, to work more efficiently, and make this the best city government we can. And all within the context of that 0% property increase. Someone recently asked me, what is your vision for Sheboygan? It was a challenging question, but a very appropriate one. Here's my response to you and to them. I see a Sheboygan that progressively moves forward into the future, making whatever necessary adjustments need to be made economically, socially, ethnically, and politically, while still maintaining its genuine and beloved small town flavor. I see a Sheboygan where our children and grandchildren grow up in a city where government is responsive and sensitive to their needs, where we treat everyone with decency and respect, no matter who your parents are or how important you are. I see a Sheboygan that will create economic conditions and opportunities that will encourage our children to go to college or technical college and come back to their hometown to make it better instead of leaving and going away and making some other community better. I see a Sheboygan that creates a social and economic environment where our senior citizens and the rest of our people can simply be able to afford to live in Sheboygan and in turn encourage others to do the same. I see a Sheboygan where citizens do not have to be fearful of illegal drug use and trafficking, fearful of gangs, or feel fearful that their children would be prey to these thugs. I see a Sheboygan where citizens should not have to work hard and spend hard earned money to maintain their properties while having to look out their windows and see garbage. No one should have to do that. I see a Sheboygan that respects and protects its parks for us and for all future generations to enjoy and be very proud of. I see a Sheboygan that bends over backwards to make our local businesses feel welcome, taken care of, and appreciated. I see a Sheboygan that appreciates and respects those who depend on transit to go to work, to the doctor, school, pharmacy, 
and all those important places that are a part of their important lives. And finally, Alderman, I envision a Sheboygan that has a common council that is respectful to each other and governs this beautiful city of ours to the highest standards of propriety, professionalism, and represents only the interests of the people that elected them without qualms or compromise. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of being your mayor. It is truly an honor for me to serve you as mayor of the best city to raise a family. I want to thank the thousands of people who voted for me and continue to support me. I want to thank all our competent and dedicated city workers for all they do. You make me proud. I want to thank the Common Council for their hard work and cooperation and understanding of the tough issues we have to deal with. To me, being mayor is more than a job. It's a promise I have made to you. I made this promise to every citizen of, of Sheboygan from all walks of life. As your mayor, I will lead this beautiful city of ours to prosperity with the highest expectations and bind myself to the highest standards in everything I do. And I will expect <coughs> nor accept any less from those who are accountable to you. As we move our city forward into the new century, we are regaining what we have lost and restoring what we most cherish, open government and responsive government. Folks, there is no other kind of government. We shall discover new opportunities to chart the way to a better today and a brighter tomorrow for you and your children. Alderman, it's time to deliver the goods. God bless America and God bless our beautiful city of Sheboygan. Good night and thank you everyone. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Marge Mattern to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Scott Lewandowski, whose term expires 4-30-09. Patricia, excuse me, Patricia Weisrock to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Arnold Martin, whose term expires on 4-30-2008. Alderman Bonnie Serta to be considered for appointment to the Industrial Development Commission to fill the unexpired term of Alderman Don Van Akron, whose term expires 4-18-07, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. And then uh, there are the following appointments for your consideration to the Standing Committees, to the Finance Committee, Alderman James Groff, Chairman, uh, Mark Hanna, <coughs> Vice Chairman, Gene Clayunas, Renee Susha and James Boren. Protect, uh, Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Silas Vanderweel, Chairman. Uh, Marilyn Montemeyer, Vice Chairman. Uh, Vicki Meyer, Bonnie Serta, and Richard Manny. To the Public Works Committee, Vicki Meyer, Chairman. <coughs> Jean Kittleson, Vice Chairman. Robert Ryan, Richard Manny, and Jean Davis. <coughs> to the Salaries and Grievances Committee, Renee Susha, Chairman. Jean Clayunas, Vice Chairman. Marilyn Montemeyer, Jean Kittleson, and Jeff Radke. To the Law and Licensing Committee, Jeff Radke, Chairman. Robert Ryan, Vice Chairman. James Bourne, Eldon Berg, and Dennis Bauman. Signed by the Mayor. Those will lie over. And then the Mayor has uh, appointed uh, a number of individuals to the various boards, committees, commissions, uh, authorities. I believe all the aldermen have copies of those. There's nine pages worth of appointments. And uh, unless the mayor so chooses, I'll pass on reading. We generally don't. Is that acceptable to the council? Very good. Thank you. Those will lie over. Good. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Madam City Clerk, pardon me. That's okay. Pardon me. That's Take right. your time. <clears throat> okay, we have public forum this evening. Um, first on our list 
is Missy Guiney. Missy, if you could come up to the front here, please. And Missy, can you give me your home address, please? 4910. Can you get the mic closer to you? Yeah. 4910 Benley Court. What is it? Benley Court. Benley. Is that in Sheboygan? No, it's in Manitowoc. Manitowoc. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I would like to take this opportunity to thank the previous council members for approving our new permit requests regarding overnight street blocks and the sale of alcohol on city property for the John Michael Kohler Art Center's annual Outdoor Arts Festival. By allowing the Art Center to block off New York Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue throughout the duration of the festival, we have been able to address some of the layout issues we've experienced in the past. With these streets blocked off, we are now able to move artist booths out into the street, which will give us more room to set up art workshops and other festival activities. We appreciate the city's willingness to work with our organization over the past almost 30 years now to bring this amazing art-based festival to this community. We hope to continue this partnership for many more years to come. For anyone that hasn't been to the Outdoor Arts Festival, I would like to take a moment to highlight some of the exciting activities that will be happening during the festival this summer on July 15th and 16th. Over 135 artists from California to New York have been chosen to show and sell their work, including paintings, sculptures, photographs, jewelry, ceramics, wood, textiles, metalwork, prints, drawings, and glasswork. This is a great opportunity to purchase a variety of one-of-a-kind and limited edition works of art for a birthday present or anniversary gift, or maybe you're just looking to fill your new office building with original paintings and phot photographs. Each item is unique and handcrafted and sold directly to you by the artists. <clears throat> this year, we are also introducing a new program called the Art Patrons Program. If you're looking to avoid the crowds, you might be, prefer a private viewing of the artist booths before everyone else. The Art Center will be introducing this program that serves up VIP treatment to those of you who are, who are out there and serious about buying art. The Art Patrons Program is for anyone willing to make a good faith pledge to spend at least $250 during the festival weekend on artwork created by participating artists at the festival. A scrumptious complimentary breakfast served by Margot, one of Sheboygan's newest restaurants, will be prepared for the art patrons, served in the matrix inside the art center at 8 a.m. Before the breakfast begins, all the patrons will check in at a registration table and be given their art patron's bags. Each bag will contain a, ba a badge for the patron to wear while traveling around the artist booth. This badge allows the artist to identify you as an art patron even after the private viewing time has <coughs> ended. The art patrons are also given 10 small plaques to distribute to each artist they have purchased work from. The artists look at these plaques as awards that advertise to other festival goers that someone with a particular interest in the arts has purchased artwork from their booths. You don't have to be a certified art buyer or collector to participate in this program. The goal of the art patrons program is to create a special opportunity for art lovers those people who have an interest in supporting artists in general. So chat it up with other art lovers, enjoy the complimentary breakfast, and enjoy the private previewing where you can shop without the crowds. We will also have several art workshops as, as we normally do every year. Um, this year we'll have utopia structures. Participants of all ages will design <coughs> and build an individual utopia structure out of cardboard and other materials and add it to a collaborative effort in the artery. Mm -hmm. The second workshop, Wings and Flying Things, participants will use a variety of found materials to create a pair of wings, a jet pack, or some other yet to be invented contraption for flying. We will have a variety of methods and materials available so that very young children up through teens and adults have fun with this activity. We hope that participants will feel inspired to wear their creations around the festival. Uh, clay play is, is something we always do as one of our workshops. One of our art and industry artists and other volunteers will help visitors throw clay on the wheel. We'll also set up to do pinching, coiling, and other hand building techniques. As always, we'll have face painting for the kids too. 
<clears throat> the music lineup this year of live entertainment is out of this world. On Saturday, the festival's jam, music jams, kicks off with Pandora's Groove, a steel drum band, travels through a natty nation of reggae, and closes the stage with Punto de Vista, a vibrant salsa band with a jazzy touch. Sunday, we'll journey around the world with Clam Nation, an assemble of world funk and jazz, and back for an encore performance, Copper Box, an amazing accordion swamp rock band, will wrap up the show. Um, Missy, would you like an additional minute? Yeah. We're just about done. I'm almost done. Okay, great. Um, the refreshments include everything from Wisconsin bratwurst to veggie burgers, fresh mozzarella and tomato ske skewers. If you need a break from the heat, come inside and order fresh salads and soup and sandwich from our art cafe. At the Art Center, you can always expect the unexpected. So if you've never visited the Art Center or haven't visited us lately, Stop by and take a stroll through our 10 galleries. Watch a spectacular performance, jam out at a festive Fridays, shop for unique gifts at the Outdoor Arts Festival, or build a boat on the 4th of July for the Art Armada. There is truly something here for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Amy Horst. Is, oh, she's with you. Thank you. <clears throat> Then we have, is it Clarence Maurer? <coughs> Clarence, can I get your home address, please? 1424 South 9th Street. South 9th Street? Yes, ma'am. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. I should take less than that. Mr. Mayor, council members, I have one thought that I would like to present to you. Uh, it, I got this from the horse's mouth. I used to go, uh, when the gas prices was a lot cheaper, I used to travel to Fond du Lac in order to enjoy uh, the cuisine at uh, Old Country Buffet. And uh, I became quite good friends with the then manager, Dan, and uh, I asked him one time, why didn't uh, Old Country Buffet open a store here in Sheboygan, since Sheboygan is considerably larger than Fond du Lac. And his reply was, the council turned him down. Well, that, to me, that doesn't appear very sensible because, number one, it's not a Hooters, that's for sure, <laughs> which I can understand him turning that down. <laughs> But uh, it is a reputable type of business. And uh, number one, it, employ it enhances employment. Number two, it uh, en also enhances your tax base, your tax dollars, and uh, the revenue for the city. So if anything, li uh, any uh, reputable business of that nature is presented to you for your consideration, I hope you will have a different attitude than the previous council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maurer. And last on the list would be Carter Paulus. <laughs> and Carter, can I have your home address, please? 414 Erie. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you mostly the new Common Council, all of the Common Council, but the new Common Council, for the honor and privilege to speak tonight for a moment or two. This evening I had an invitation to come, and I was extremely pleased, and it was very more emotional than I expected, because I went to an academy where I heard bagpipes every day for almost a year. And it was quite an emotional moment for me to listen to those bagpipes tonight. So whomever had that idea, thank you very much. Just loved it. I want to congratulate the members of the Common Council that have been newly elected and been re-elected. We now have some more new added intelligence in our Common Council. And you will be tested. We need your expertise. I started out three years ago with some rather disgust, I suppose, if you will, just like any other taxpayer. 
and I thought about fiscal responsibility. And we need fiscal responsibility in Sheboygan. And we also need accountability in Sheboygan for that fiscal responsibility. And we also need justification for your actions of whatever you're going to do for the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. And I suppose I might be thinking about that ever annual event called the budget. And I hope that you will think seriously about transferring to a zero budget process, which requires every item to be justified. And you will be amazed at what you will come up with. So I wish you all well, and I wish you all the very best. And thank you very, very much. Thank you. I want to thank the citizens who uh, addressed the Common Council tonight. Thank you very much for coming before us. The next item on the agenda is resolution introduced 311 by Alderman Groff requesting the mayor to reactivate various special committees for the 2006 07 council year. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a mo motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Okay, please call the roll. Bowman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cuyunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 15 ayes. We have number two. One, two is the resolution expressing the support of the city of Sheboygan for a passage of Senate Substitute Amendment 1 to Senate Bill 356, a Wisconsin Environmental Insurance Choice of Law Bill introduced in the state legislature. By uh, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Thank you. This resolution is something that the, the state really wants our support in giving them a little help so that they can give the insurance companies a poke to pay when they need to or when they should regarding environmental um, problems. I would ask, could, could Susan Hart explain a bit further for us? Uh, yes, I, uh, I'd ask for a motion to open the floor. Ms. Hart is not a department head. Second. Motion and second to open the floor to Susan Hart. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Hart, would you please approach the podium? Good evening. As Alderperson Montemayor said, this resolution is to indicate support to our legislators for this Senate bill. Um, it is to force out-of-state insurance companies who provided liability insurance coverages to businesses. And it's a, it wants to force them to cover the payments that they should make to clean up contaminated brownfields. What happened was prior to 1985, um, various companies such as paper companies took out liability policies. And if they took it prior to 1986, Wisconsin law at that time allowed them to um, have a provision in their uh, policy that allowed the insurance company to select what state they wrote the policy in. And what the insurance companies would then do is write the policies in states that are more favorable to insurance companies. So when, um, especially the paper companies up in the Fox Valley area, when they started having the DNR come in saying, you've got to clean this up, went back to their insurance companies, said, we need you to do this. And the insurance companies refused based on they were not going to go by Wisconsin law. They wanted to go by the law in which, of the state in which the policy had been written. 
So one of the things that the insurance companies have been able to do is to deny these claims or withhold the claims due to this loophole. And the bill is currently supported by environmentalists, labor, businesses who want to see these contaminated areas remediated and put back on the tax rolls in order to create jobs and economic development in Wisconsin. Currently, without this law, without the passage of this bill, existing court cases are tied up in court for years. So a liability plan that was worth a million dollars back in 1985 even though it's still a million dollars, is worth substantially less. And so this appears to be the insurance company's tactics. 16 other states, including Minnesota, our neighbor, has adopted uh, such a bill. If you pass this resolution tonight, this will go on to our representatives to encourage them to support it in Madison. And it is being sponsored at a bipartisan level. Are there any questions for Ms. Hart? Thank you. <coughs> OK. Alderman Hanna. I just have one. Mayor, I had one question. Those states that have adopted this measure, have they, the businesses in those states have difficulty uh, getting liability? Is, is your mic on? I thought it was. Probably just not close. You're, you're uh, activated, but you need. Sure. Uh, I'm just curious that if we if we support this and this gets passage in Wisconsin, uh, our insurance companies going to not cover companies. What's been the experience in states that have passed this? I'm not familiar with that. Alderman Hanna, I don't know that answer, but I would be glad to research it for you if you would like. One, one of the things that has been pointed out, if I may add, is that Sheboygan, like a lot of communities, has a lot of contaminated uh, spots in the, in the city. There are a lot of contamination sites that have been identified. If at some point uh, the contamination is unable to be cleaned up, it may fall on, on the taxpayer's back. That's the whole issue behind it, because what this deals with is choice of law pretty much. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think that question that Alderman Hanna uh, asked is uh, very important. So I would make a motion that this would lie over to our next meeting so that Ms. Hart could get that information about what's been the experience with people getting liability insurance in other states. OK. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. I may, I may add, though, that this was time is of the essence. This is going before the, the committees. If you delay this for two weeks, it'll be mute. There won't be any need to act on it. Alderman Warren. Your Honor, would it be possible to add that to the agenda for this coming Monday, or is it too late for that? It'll, it'll be too late. It'll be too late. That's my understanding. Yes, sir. Uh, so they are going to be discussing it within the next... That was our understanding. We met with Senator Lipham. Okay. Uh, in that case, I better withdraw the motion then if time is of the essence, but it is a, it is a concern. Thank you. Over board. But I may just want to double check. Uh, Ms. Hart, is that, was that accurate? accurate? Please step up. Um, the mayor's office was contacted on Thursday morning that this was a very timely issue. And in fact, uh, Madam City Clerk had to put out an amended agenda for this. So timing is extremely important. I know that Manitowoc, the city of Manitowoc, has passed a similar resolution last week. Excuse hold on. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, according to this, it appears that insurance policies written before 1986 contained uh, this provision. Um, if that is indeed true, that it is no longer happening today, I don't believe that uh, uh, this would affect anybody obtaining insurance uh, in the state of Wisconsin today, because we're talking about policies written before 1986. Correct? We are talking about policies written before 1986. Correct. Any other discussion? 
And again, this is a resolution in support of. It doesn't mean that the, uh, the Senate or the, or the House is going to pass it. It's a, just simply a resolution in support of. Your, uh, your choice. Thank you, Ms. Hart. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Bauman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. 1-3 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget. And that will be referred to finance. 1-4 is a communication received by the mayor from Beth Pinter stating her opinions on the placement of the dog beach. And that will be referred to public works. 1-5 is a communication from Mary Morand of the Stephanie H. Weil Center regarding safety concerns at the southeast corner of North 9th Street and Niagara Avenue. And that will go to public protection and safety. 1-6 is a communication from Reverend Timothy Meck of Trinity Lutheran Church stating his concerns with safety in the alley immediately north of the church located on the corner of 9th and Wisconsin Avenue. And that will go to public protection and safety. 1-7 is a communication from Asher Heimerman, chairman of the Resources of Sheboygan Club, requesting that the council look to having a youth council in the city of Sheboygan. And that will be referred to Committee of the Whole. 1-8 is a claim from Christopher Walker for alleged damages to his basement when water backed up from an incorrectly installed sump pump. And that will be referred to risk management. Motion to adjourn. Motion second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Stand adjourned.